Hi everyone, Messi Coder back again inside Unity with another asset store playthrough slash tutorial slash review slash thingy. I'm playing about with the Nature Manufacturer's Meadow Environment Dynamic Nature Pack, which is stunningly beautiful. I'm playing with Vegetation Studio Pro and CTS and Sector Complete Edition. Now, Sector Complete is also made up of the smaller pieces of Sector Core, which is free. Sector Viz and Sector Stream, and we're using all three of those components to play about in this test. I'm going to take a nature manufacture, beautiful, detailed, big scene that we've got from the meadow environment pack. I'm then, oh, we've also got RAM thrown in here as well. Uh, don't forget, yeah, we've got RAM in here as well. And we're going to be chopping it up with a Sector. We're going to be using Veg Studio Pro to handle all the vegetation and all the instancing and make it all really nice, lovely and fast. And Veg Studio Pro handles multi-terrain, whereas Veg Studio Standard doesn't. That's why we're using the Pro Edition. I haven't done this before. I'm playing about. This is exciting. It could go horrendously wrong. Hopefully it won't. But this will be a workflow so you can take a massive environment, maybe like a 16K by 16K world, and chop it up into small little pieces so that it flies beautifully. Let's find out if it works. Here I am inside Unity version 2018.2.18. At the time of this recording, it's the most recent stable build. I'm gonna pop over here to projects and I'm gonna go player. Before we do anything, we're just going to switch this over to linear. Ooh, I'm going to switch this to .NET 4. Um, do you want to proceed? Yeah, going to restart. See you in a second. All right, I'm back in and we've restarted. So let's go to player again. And we did our linear, we did that. API compatibility level is at 4x. Good, good, good. Now we need to pop into the Windows Package Manager. And if I go over to the guide, it tells me we need to have mathematics, jobs, collections, burst, and post processing. So click over here on all. I'm going to go to mathematics and install you. Boop, 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 boop. It's going to triple all the way across. Lovely. Come on, you can do it. And done. Let's go to the job system. It's a preview again. It says 0.0. Point seven, and we go to all, and we're going to have collections. Install. That's nice. It's going all the way across. No point. No point nine. No. And we go to all. We're going to click on burst, and we've been all the way up to two on this one. Lovely. Look at that. No point two point four. Never was no point naught. Well, burst is very mature, isn't it? And we go to all and we're going to find post processing. Look at that. 2.1.2. Isn't that a big boy? Alrighty then. So the, well, the manual tells us that if we want to have uh, better speed, better performance, then we better turn off um, jobs debugger and leak detection. So if we close this. And we go to jobs. Um, okay, so we turn off jobs de uh, debugger, turn off the leak detection as well, and um, let's turn this one off. Enable burst safety checks. Well, he doesn't have that enabled on his manual, so we're turning that off as well. Now, um, to use the burst compiler, it says, in standard and builds, you need to make sure you install the Windows SDK and the VC++ toolkit from Visual Studio's installer. Alrighty, we better go and have a look and install those then. I'm going to click modify, modify, and let's see how this thing works. Individual components. Alrighty then. So we want to find the Windows SDK and VC toolkit thingy. So, um, where are you? These are .NET, that's fine. Um, looks like, doesn't it? I'm gonna go down here. 
one little badger. Where are you? Where are you? Would you be under W and V? Okay, VC plus plus two thousand. Oh, which one are we getting? Latest. Oh, that's all this nonsense. All right, this one here. Get that one. Don't know what. But okay, no, I'm not in James Bond. So, all right, we go down here. And we'll find do do windows windows windows. Okay, ten SDK latest one. What's the? Why have I got two? Hmm. Well, I'm gonna click that one. Yeah. Is that the one? I don't know. There's loads. There's loads, Governor. Ah, we'll go with that one. That's the latest one that's on that list, so... Yeah? Okay. You can see that I do this a lot, don't you? Alright, click my... Oh, It's on my C. I'll leave it on the C. Should I leave it on the C? How much space does it want? 4 gig. Let me just check how much space I've got on my C drive. Um, how much space have we got there? Well, we've got plenty of space. Alright, leave it on the C. I don't want it to be too confused. Okay, leave it on the C click modify now it's going to do and install all that shenanigans okay download it and install it one gig off oh, so far this one well right, we've got four gig of space we need to do so i'll see you in a second Alrighty then so now let's just go and input in our registration studio pro and then we're going to import in a load of funky stuff from nature manufacturer and then we're going to import in sector that's right, we're going to be doing something funky. Alright, now look at the size of this README from Nature Manufacturer. It's got 15.e steps. My word. So we've done the uh, these ones so far. We've imported via uh, Reg, Reg, Stadi uh, Reg Stadium, Reg Studio Pro and mucked about with our VS, uh, Visual Studios. Uh, set up project to linear, I've already done that. Deferred random graphics, I did that while I was paused on the video. Import post processing stack 2, but we did that before. Import RAM, all right. Um, we use more advanced RAM version in this project, you'd expect some missings. Okay, we'll put this new version online as fast as we can. Then we've got import CTS. Okay, then import screen space shadow pack. Not necessarily, but nice. All right, is that free? Let's have a look. All right, this is not free and it's not on sale at the moment, so we can forget about that for now. Alrighty, bye bye. SE Screen Space Shadows. I'll see you later. All right, now it's saying import the Meadow Environment Pack into your project. Uh, we've already imported that in. That's how we're reading you, Mr. Readme. Your step nine here. Okay. I hope we don't have to do anything again. And then they go to find folder. We well, we found that's the folder we're reading you from. That's that's it's you. You're you're here. Of course we found you. We're reading you. Now find a file called um, that one and import it. Or add materials. Okay, cool. Open the scene. All right, cool. Play. Let's play. All right, all right, all right, all right then. All right, according to that guide, we now import this into our into our scene, into our project, rather. And once that's done, we can then start baking our lights and doing funky stuff. There's also an A, B, C, D, E in the guide down here. Uh, you say you could extend the scene by drag and drop adding forest. Simply in the biome profiles, you will find a small forest and a small forest line prefabs. Drag and drop them and modify the shape to get new forest objects. At the end, you'll have to bake texture splat map. Right. And you could expand foliage rendering distance. Yeah, we always like doing that. And what's this here? If foliage distance will be high, you probably should bake vegetation to spawn it smoothly. In Persistent Vegetation Studio part, simply bake all vegetation items from vegetation package biomes. Before that, check what foliage we spawn at one time. Not all objects are enabled because we use fewer of them only for specific places and we paint it by hand. 
So remove them from storage. Storage registration clear instances for these three. Reflections make note that when you rebake reflection probe, you will have to see area around probe because in VS Pro instance foliage only for camera. We bake all probes with a high view for foliage. Oh. Alright. You could adjust the shadow distance to 135 like we did and improve the shadow resolution to very high resolution. Oh my word. A, B, C, D, E sounds a bit scary. Alright, we're in the demo scene and I'm going to go to Biome's prefabs and let's chuck in some of these small forests. I want to just chuck them around the place. Small forests here. And there you go. We... Right there. Click generate splat map. Boom! Now we've got our splat map generated. And if we chuck in some more forests. Oh, there you go. So let's chuck some more over here. Patches of them. Extend that a little bit. Put that there. What's that like? Boop. There you go. And if we now let's go there, maximize on place on, click play. Haven't mucked about with the baking of the light yet because you know it's going to take us 10 hours to do that and I'm sure it's going to look beautiful without it it has actually, it looks alright it looks alright, ooh can I turn off that motion blur? oh, that makes me dizzy also, oh, I don't like this fly con camera controller I'm having to hold down my right mouse button no, don't like that a lot, don't like that um, also, let's make you three aspects. That's more like it. Right, let's see if we can fly. What are we getting? We're getting 79, 80, 72, 60 FPS. Okay, we want to extend. We want to extend the um, the settings here. So if we go to Veg Studio Pro and we go to this one here. So this would be. Let's go up to 400, 400, uh, additional tree mesh distance, hmm, kicking the mesh trees at 200, how's that, okay, um, in the guide it says we use 400 for grass and additional, what's it say, 300 for trees, oh, okay, so that's 300 he uses for trees. Okay, what else did you say? If foliage distance would be high, you probably should bake vegetation to spawn it smoothly. If persistent vegetation storage part... Okay, I don't want to start baking and marking about with that. I don't want to start playing around with that. You should adjust the shadow distance to 1350 like we did. Shadow distance, we go to project settings and quality. Shadow, shadow. Shadow distance. All right. Uh, what does he want? One thousand three hundred and fifty. Bloody hell. Okay. I'm gonna save that. Gonna save the project. All right. Now let's click play. It's taking its time. We're in. Okay. Give it a bit of a shake around. Let's go for a drive. We're hitting 43, 50, 51, 52. Oh, hate, I don't like that. 48. Does look pretty. Does look pretty. Can't deny that it does look pretty. Bloody hell, it looks pretty. then we going to take in that corner so let's start adding in sector and see if we can get this FPS better Whee! 
So I'm back inside Unity, I had to pause it because I wanted to do a backup. Everything froze for a long time. Now I don't know if that's normal, uh, if that's because of the size of this scene or, or whatever, or because of Vegetation Studio. I think it might be Vegetation Studio doing its magic, but it just froze my entire Unity. So don't freak out if that happens, just have patience and you'll be fine. Okay, very exciting. Sector is in the project now. Oh, I'm a bit scared. I'm a bit scared. Okay, so there is a guide on uh, the website of awesome technologies to set up runtime loaded terrains, which I can assume we're going to need to do for Sector because it'll be spawning stuff as we're running around. That is runtime, isn't it? It says go to Red Studio. Okay, let's go to here. Oh. And let's make that a little bit bigger again. It says, go to terrains. Go to terrains tab, uncheck the automatic calculation check. Okay. And enter the center point of your terrains in world space coordinates and then extent of each direction. Example below has one 10,000 by 10,000 meter area with a height of 500. Okay. So. Um, is this, maybe this is right, I don't know, what's the size of the terrain? What is the size of you, Mr. Terrain? The size of Mr. Terrain is, um, oh, okay, um, 1,000, uh, 2K by 2K, so maybe he's actually, maybe he's alright, maybe he's okay. Okay, and, let's Otherwise, what sensor is gonna be odd? Hang on. Um, what did we say? I've forgotten. Was it 200? Oh my, God, my memory is going. My memory is going. 1,000. Okay, 1,000. Alrighty then. So I'm scrolling you back up to the top. Put you to be 500. Oh, you're zero, and you're 1,000. Okay, refresh. Are you refresh? Are we supposed to click refresh? I don't know. Are we supposed to click refresh? I don't know! Okay, we need to set all terrains for Unity. Add the terrain component to the same game object as the terrain. The terrain has to be in the location where we've loaded it. Component will store this resolution from Origins. Okay. Alright. We've got one terrain here. Add all you okay. All right, so we'll do that after we've done already. Okay, all right, so um, we will. Oh, it's doing stuff, I think it's doing stuff. Okay, it's done its magic now. Let's just save this project and save this scene. I do remember correctly now. We need to pop over to here to terrain, go to Windows, Sector, Terrain. There you go, and it's zoomed out here's our terrain and here's all the background mountains and stuff that we needn't bother with so sectors width and length this is how many sectors we're going to chop this up by so if we've got 2k by 2k world we're not that big if we chopped it up uh four by four then that would be just having 500 by 500 terrains um is that going to be big enough for us to do this as an example tell you what let's just because it is let's do that um, split terrain group static objects group dynamic objects okay create mesh for portals I don't know let's click sectorize and now it should go chicka 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 and chop up our terrain into little pieces oh fingers crossed everyone I haven't done this before now as this is doing this, just want to let you know, this is using Sector Core, which is free. So it's actually free for us to chop up our large terrain and smaller terrain. So if you're making a massive 16k by 16k world in Gaia, for example, which doesn't support multi-tile, this will turn it into multi-tile. Isn't that clever? And Procedure Worlds, who, own, who make Gaia and Gina and CTS have also now acquired this wonderful sector tool. So there'll be wonderful sector and Gaia and Gina integrations going on, making your life a lot easier than when you chop up your terrain into small pieces, Gina 
uh, will know what to do and Gaia also so fingers crossed we're going to be playing about with that very soon right now we're coming to the end of this little bar and then the magic will appear all right that's done um okay everything's magic oh we've seen all our little blue squares appear over here as well so if i close that you'll see now i've got a folder called terrain and in my folder called terrain i've got bum, 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 terrain tiles and inside there do we have anything funky yeah we've got a terrain in there all right so i didn't actually get anything grouped it seemed um okay that's interesting interesting um Alrighty then, so we've got our terrain chopped up into little pieces. Now, if I went over to my camera, and I just scroll down to here to the bottom, and I click add components, and we go in and we type in um, a sector, do, 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 culling camera, right? Uh, turn off multi-camera culling, and leave all these settings by default. And now if we click play, I think Vegetation Studio is going to not render anything, to be honest, because we haven't finished the settings. Oh, okay, let's, let's not do that yet. Um, and actually, we can get rid of this, because this was just going to show you that, okay, it does the, the cutting stuff with the camera. And to be fair, Vegetation Studio is already taking care of its part. We can get rid of this bit here. All right, let's pop now back into Veg Studio. All right, it tells us in this manual. So go to the Veins tab, uncheck the... Um, Oh, hang on. We've got to set one time terrains, blah, blah, blah. Um, it doesn't say add all Unity terrains in here. It's got nothing in it. So let's do it. And then we should see a load of terrains up here. Yay! Yay! Multi terrain! Oh my god! That was so easy! We just clicked a button! Okay, I'm really excited. Let's now see what it says. Um, check the add, remove, at enable, disable chip box. So. Um, where are you? Unity Terrain Script. Unity Terrain Script. Um, hang on. Is it on the terrain? Bum, bum, bum. Yes. Unity Terrain Scripts. Right. Tick that. Okay. This when this enabled, we'll look for veg um, pro components. We'll also remove the terrain when the game object is disabled or destroyed. The mesh terrain and recast has similar settings. Okay. Where. Oh, that's for the mesh. We don't, we don't want mesh. Um, recast terrain. In play mode, when terrains are loaded by code with additive uh, scenes, the terrain should register and spawn vegetation. Okay. Does that mean now we have to go to each one of these one by one and do it? It does. Alright, so if I now just type in terrain, terrain, okay, and where are they? All tools? Here we go, these are my terrains. So if I select all of them, and now I tick that, they're all done at once. That's easier, isn't it? Close that out. All right, beautiful. I'm gonna click save. Okay, we're clicking save. Okay, let's just click play and let's put that back to maximize and see what happens. Hopefully we still got vegetation studio kicking in vegetation. That's the first test. Do we still have vegetation? Come on, are your fingers crossed? This takes ages to load up. It's because a lot's happening. Oh my god, it's only bloody done it. It's only gone and done it. Right, weird. Oh, look, at our FPS went down to three when it was going mental there. Okay, let's... I hate that. Like, like I hate that. Oh, really don't like that motion blur. And my Unity doesn't like that motion blur either. Right, we've still got in that 50, 47, 50s because we're not really using anything in sector at the moment. All we've used is sector core to chop up our terrain into smaller terrains. Now that helps us when it comes to all these trees and stuff, but it doesn't really help us any more than that. So, let's get out of this and do the rest of our sectoring. 
let's pop over to Mr. Camera, Mr. Camera, and we're going to click Add Components, and we're going to add that cutting script. Go Add Components, Sector Culling Camera, lovely. Turn off Multi Camera Culling, and now if we turn off Maximize on Play, make this about yay, and that will keep the camera selected. And now let's zoom out of it so we can see funky stuff going on. If I click play, let's wait 20 minutes for it to load up again. Right now, you see the terrains have all disappeared. Look behind me, the terrain tiles have gone. They've got what I'm looking at. I'm looking over here, and the terrain tiles have magically appeared. So there you go. Now we're not loading any of the terrain that we don't need. That's free. This is sector core. What you've just done now with sector is all free. Now, isn't that nice? It's very nice. So all of this, chopping it up into little pieces and then culling it. Um, well, the culling part. No, the culling part isn't free. The chopping up part is free. This culling part is sector viz. So the sector viz is this culling part. The bit that we can now see and we're hiding that stuff behind it so ignore me everything of chopping it up is free but the visually bit is the oh it's the sector viz part now we want the sector streaming part because our fps is still a bit pants oh let's keep our fingers crossed that we're gonna get this up so we're currently we are still around the same fps as we were before maybe we've had like three or four fps improvement so yeah we've got about three or four fps improvement than before but our batches and our verts look at that that is, that is low low as you like we have got vegetation studio doing a lot of work so if you didn't have vegetation studio in this scene handling all of this wonderful vegetation on the gpu and patching it and stuff you would be in trouble but this is where it's nice to do lots of things together Okay, let's get out of here. I think at this point we want to um, get rid of. Can we get rid of the script? Do we need the script on there? Or should we need it? Let's just disable it for the moment. And we'll go to Windows Sector Stream and um, export all sectors. And this scene has no loaders. Are you sure you want to export? No, cancel. So then we shall go here and say. Neighbor, 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 where are you? Neighbor, neighbor loader. Okay, here we go. So now it's got a neighbor loader on there. So it's got this neighbor loader and it's got this magic there. So max depth um, of our neighbors. What's that going to say? Determines how far out to load neighbor sectors from the current sector. Zero means only the current sector. I think one is going to be. Because it's small, let's do two. Alright, and then now we'll go to Windows, Sector, Stream. Now we'll click Export All Sectors. Uh, would you like to back up? No? I'm going to say no. Because I'm naughty. Here we are, back inside. Um, Alright, so I'm going to click on this little close thing here. And hopefully we're alright. You eagle eyes amongst you would have realised that now our world well, is gone. All our terrains have gone. We've just got this log sitting here and some plants. Oddly, we've got you know, those plants there. So let's click play. Oh, hang on. We haven't got maximized, but it will help us here. We'll be able to see them magically appear. And check out our FPS count. All right, it's loaded up. It's loading up. It's loading up. Two, three, five, two, one. What well, is loading everything? And bang, magically everything's loaded in. Now, all of a sudden, we've already gone up to 60s, when before we were in the 50s and 40s. Uh, now, really, this post processing thing is winding me up something chronic. So, I'm going to stop that because it really is upsetting me. I don't like it. I don't like it at all. Um, post processing behavior. We want to turn off um, that silly. Shenanigan, where's that? Where are you? Post processing, ba -ba -ba. motion blur. Turn you off. Oh, should have done that ages ago. 
Here we go. Let's click play and do that again. I hate the motion blur. Really do not like motion blur. Now you would think. Okay, now I don't have motion blur. Um, well, it still it drops down as it tries to draw everything for the first time. You would see everything starting to appear. Now, what else? What's changed? What's different? You wonder. Uh, what's different between streaming and just the culling one that we had a moment ago with the viz? Well, when you've got a massive world, if you chop it up your terrain into small pieces, it's still one big scene, isn't it? That means the number of prefabs you've got, the number of colliders you've got in your scene are limited. You can't have an 8K by 8K, 16K by 16K world. Oh, we just hit there. Oh, there we go. Now we need to, oh, we need to play about with the lighting, bake the lighting and stuff with Vegetation Studio. Oh, look at that. As we, hot, as we crossed over here, boom. All right, so Vegetation Studio, uh, you need to have the um, ref baking, uh, you need to do your baking when you've got your reflection probes and everything in view of the camera, because it renders everything from the camera's view. So uh, there you go. We also could increase the number. We've only got two tiles, remember, which is like the one that we're on, one in front of us, because that's number one, and two would be one further on from that. So we could increase that. If we go to where our camera is, here, let's zoom out, you'll see that we've got the tile we're on, one tile there, and it goes out to here the most here, and what we've got here. Actually, we were like on the edge, so we, say we're here. Our tile, one, two. Our tile, one, two. Our tile, one, two. But diagonally, it's just the ones. And if we now move forward, boom, it loads in that one. Now, importantly, see that? Yeah, we need to increase that. We need to increase that to at least three. I would reckon because they're small. We don't have to, for the sake of this test. I did very small terrains because my 2K by 2K terrain isn't really that big in the first place. Not really big enough um, to worry about us going crazy. So if we go back now to our um, camera down here, and we say max depth is going to be three, and now. Let me just close that so you can see. Look, this is what we have in our scene. Right? Let me also, let me just stick this in a folder. Um, or in the camera. Uh, here, and I'm going to stick all these forces in there just to get them out of the way. Now, when we click play, okay, it takes a little time, you will see a load of scenes appear. Because, because, as I was trying to say before I interrupted myself, instead of it just being chopped up terrain tiles, which means you're still restricted by the number of objects you've got in your scene because it's still one big scene. Now it's actually lots of scenes. It's created lots and lots of scenes. Each of my terrain tiles lives inside its own scene and it streams and loads in those scenes on the fly as we're running. So this is where it's a little bit hardcore. Now, if I loaded up this scene, I would have I would be able to edit and put in game objects and things in this scene and that won't affect the number of game objects colliders and everything I can have in this scene so all of a sudden if you were having errors saying that you've got too many colliders going on and unity wasn't able to handle it you don't have that problem anymore now to be fair, if you're flying around, you're going to want to have your settings a lot different, but you're going to be running around on the ground, so let's imagine. Also, we know, you know, you've seen this now, you've seen what this is like. You know, you can you can see that I'm loading in things, and there you can even see the, the you know, Fushtrum here, drawing the Vegetation Studios veg, and if I went forward here, let's fly forward, and the streaming, because here we go, you see that it's no longer loading in these scenes. Let's go big. Here we go. Come big. Now if I got drop down to the floor and imagine that I'm running around, you could probably get away with having it back down to two or one depending on the size of your, of your world. Now we're streaming. So the most important thing about this 
is that we're able to um, have massive worlds, lots of scenes full of objects, full of interesting things going on and not hitting unity limits and restrictions. That's what I love about the sector thing. And the most thing, most important thing I love about the sector means I can have a crazy huge 16K by 16K map that I build like in, in Gaia or something and then allow this just to chop it up for me into little pieces and then stream it. My big concern was how Veg Studio was going to handle the streaming. It seems to be handling it okay. There's obviously got to be some settings I can play about with to optimize it even more. But it's actually doing all right. Our FPS, we went up to 60s, and now FPS has dropped down to the 50s again. A little bit concerned about, I probably configured something incorrectly, so I'm not getting a massive FPS increase. And actually, as, I, as, I, as soon as I said that, we hit and loaded in some more scenes. So we do have a little bit of a drop as it loads in more scenes. It reminds me of like you know playing an MMO, like Star Wars Galaxies or something, as it tries to load up yeah, the next scene that it pops in, for instance. But, I'll tell you what, if I knew what I was doing, and if I took the time to even read the manual, or do what, at least one tutorial, I might actually have a better idea how to optimize this. But for a guy who barely read any instructions, either than the, the quick start guide readmes, I think I've proven that an idiot, like myself, can use Veg Studio with Sector, quite easily. This was a test to myself more than anything. I'm just glad I recorded this. So I actually, this is my first run through of doing it. I've recorded my first attempt with all of my failures and everything on there. Um, and I'm quite pleased with myself. Quite pleased indeed. So the FPS account isn't amazing, but that's obvious because I'm doing something a bit dodge. I do have settings for Veg Studio set a bit high. I don't know why we're bothering with the uh, mesh trees to be so far. If I drop that out, boop, 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 and we pop into Mr. Veg Studio, and we say uh, vegetation, and we drop that back to what say 150. But leave the plant distance 400. And now, if we kick in and push play, and we're in our scene. And then it's kick in and load stuff. Hello, hello. We need to have some kind of like loading screen happen while it's trying to load out all the scenes up. And now, if I'm running around, do we see an improvement? Barely, barely see an improvement on there. Oh, we're up to 57s. So, obviously, um, the mesh trees has had a little bit of an improvement. But we need to play about and optimize this a little bit more. A little bit more, I think. Alrighty. Okay. Well, there we go. I'm a. Uh, oh, and we also need to work out um, our baking, our lighting. So, yeah, I, I told you I didn't do any baking because I didn't want to wait 10 hours. But if we pop back over here where the sun is, everything's lovely and fine. Over there's the dark side of the world. Let's, let's not worry about that. That's not where it for now. So if you enjoyed this, if you had fun and enjoyed this, like I know I did, well, click on that big red juicy subscribe button down below, tell all of your friends and neighbours about the Messi Coda over on Twitch as well, every Fridays and Saturdays, or the w.twitch.tv slash the Messi Coda. If you do have any advice on how I can improve my um, dodgy loading and FPS, please put it in the comments down below. I love it when you guys and girls give me advice and tell me what I've done wrong. Um, my feedback that I give to people for improvements goes both ways. I need you guys to give me feedback so I can get better too. I like constructive criticism as much as the next fellow. Ooh, look at that. I need to put some fishies in there. <gasps> my fish script. Yes, we can put my fish script in there. And finally, we can do some fishing. Whoa. Oh no. That, that, that tasted disgusting. Okay, guys and girls, I'll see you next time. Oh, don't forget, if you do like it, click it. If you want to see more of my crazy videos, click on the left side of your screen now. And down below, there's that big juicy subscribe button. And right next to it is the magic bell that if you click it, it will tell you if I've got a new video coming out. Till next time.